Shalom, brothers and sisters. All praises to Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai. My name is Zaquan Ash from the HODC community. And today's topic is called, Is This the Son of David? Now, this class is a continuation from uh, the last class I did. Uh, the class was called The Seven Warnings of Matthew's the 23rd chapter. Now, in this uh, class, I'm going to speak a little bit more about uh, Christ's divinity and his messianic claims and his authority and power with the Most High. Now, let's go to the book of Matthew's, the 12th chapter, and let's read the 29th verse. The book of Matthew's, the 12th chapter, and the 29th verse. Let's read it. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? Now, reading above this 29th verse, uh, you read the earlier scriptures, Christ is in communication with the Pharisees and the scribes, and he made a statement to them. He told them, if Satan house is divided, how can it stand? Now, back to this 29th verse. In the 29th verse, the strong man is a reference to Satan, and the house is a reference to Satan's kingdom. And the goods that were spoiled or taken from Satan's kingdom were the disease and the sick and the blind and the people that was possessed with devils and demons. And Christ, when he came on the scene, he healed those people and took them from under the control of Satan. So he spoiled Satan's house, which was his kingdom. Okay, because remember in the book of, I believe, Matthew's the fourth chapter, when Satan told Christ, I would give you all these kingdoms if you would bow down and worship me. Okay, now let's go from here. Let's go to the book of John, the ninth chapter. And we're going to read the 6th and the 7th verse. John, the ninth chapter, the 6th and the 7th verse. Let's read that. And when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. 7th verse. And said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. So the scriptures tell you that Christ spat on the ground and made mud or rather clay out of the spittle. Now, in the earlier scriptures in the book of Genesis, uh, man was created out of the dust of the ground. And also in other scriptures, the Most High speaks about himself being the potter and we as his creation people being the clay. Now, going back to John, the ninth chapter, six and seven verse, this mud is a symbolic of impurity. So Christ is demonstrating the removal of man's impureness, okay? So this miracle foretold the future healings of the blindness of the nation of Israel. Because when you read in Isaiah, the 29th chapter, in the 10th verse, it speaks about the seers are blind, the prophets are blind, the priests are blind, the scribes are blind, the whole nation is blind. Now, I want to speak on this word uh, messianic because I use that a lot and I was asked about that. Now, the word messianic comes from the noun Messiah, which has its origin in the Aramaic word Mashiha, which means the anointed of the Lord. Now, the word messianic was first uh, used around approximately 1794. Now, let's Go back over to Matthew's, the 12th chapter. Let's get something else out of there. We're going to read the 22nd verse to the 24th verse. That's Matthew's, the 12th chapter, the 22nd verse, and the 24th verse. Let's read it. Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. 23rd verse. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? So, the son of David is a messianic title because now um, the blind has their sight restored. Lepers are being healed, which uh, Israelite lepers wasn't being healed for a long time until Yahweh came on the scene. So they never really even witnessed or seen this before. Okay, now let's read what the Pharisees, what was their reaction? Let's read the 24th verse. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow do not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devil. Now, this became the official said, okay, Christ 
Uh, Yahushua does not cast out devils by the power of the Most High, the power of God. He's doing this by the power of Satan because he's demon possessed. And this became this became the official said. So a lot of the people, a lot of people listen to what their leaders and and their uh, 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 priests tell them. And they went with this. This became the official said. So let's go from here. Let's go back to St. John, the ninth chapter and the 32nd and the 33rd verse. St. John, the ninth chapter, we're going to read verse 32 and verse 33. Let's read it. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? See, 33rd verse. If this man were not of the Most High, he could do nothing. So they said, since the world began, who have healed a blind man that was born blind, not went blind, but that was born blind. These are messianic miracles. This is from the son of David. Only the Most High and the son of David can do such acts as this. Okay, from here, let's go over a few pages to John the seventh chapter. And we're going to read verse 31 and verse 32. Let's read that. And many of the people believed on him and said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than these which this man hath done? See, the people was looking for Christ to come at some other time. But there was him on the scene right there doing these miracles. And they said, When Christ come, will he do greater miracles than this man? And that man was Christ on the scene. That's Israelites for you. You see that? Now, let's read what the Pharisees said. Let's read the next verse. Verse 30, uh, verse 32, the Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Now let's go to the book of Luke, the fifth chapter, and let's read the 12th to the 16th verse. It reads, and it came to pass when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Yahweh fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the, lepr the leprosy departed from him. And he charged him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. You see that 15th verse. But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. The 16th verse. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. So Yahweh withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. He was praying because Israel was a hard people. Okay, they were stubborn, they were stiff-necked, and they was hard, hard-headed. So he was praying that, that they would uh, loosen up a little bit and turn on their spiritual eyes or open their spiritual eyes, their mind, to understand his messianic claims or understand his authority. You see that? So reading above, when the leopard was healed, Yahweh told the leopard, look, Go to the priest and show thyself to the priest and offer this sacrifice. Now, when the leopard offered the sacrifice, the sacrifice that the leopard offered was a guilt offering. See, now this is presented to the priest because no leopards were being healed at that time. So someone that was a leopard and now they cleanse and someone that was blind, born blind, but now they have sight. Okay, that was amazing to the priest. So this offering that the leper presented was a guilt offering. And Yahweh said, what? As a testimony against the priest. So by the leper offering this offering, this would be the proof of Yahweh divinity. And this would give the priest evidence of Christ's power. You see that? And what Christ was doing, sending the lepers to the priest. And, and for the lepers to make an offering, uh, a, a guilt offering as a testimony against the priest, he was forcing the Pharisees and forcing the priests to begin to investigate his messianic claims and for them to come to a decision or make a decision that he is the Messiah. What you going to do? You going to deny me or you going to see my works and accept and agree that I am the Mashiach that the Most High sent? Okay, let's go from here. Let's go over a few pages to the book of Luke, the fourth chapter, and let's read the 
25th to the 29th verse. Let's read that. But I tell you, let's read the 24th verse. And he said, Yahushai said, Verily, I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. Now keep that in mind. No prophet is accepted in his own country. Now the 25th verse. But I tell you of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elijah sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, which is a Canaanite city. That's a Gentile city. You see that? Unto a woman that was a widow, 27 verse. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet. And none of them was cleansed, saving Naaman the Syrian. So the point here that Yahawashai is making to the Israelites that the Most High would use uh, our nations and he would use other things or, 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 or other elements to provoke Israel, to push them to really seek and serve the Most High and accept his prophets and his Mashiach, his Messiah, and accept his works. Remember the scripture said that I would provoke you to jealousy with a people that is no people, that are no people. Okay, that was the Edomites. But the Most High also used nations to push Israel, to open their minds to seek the Most High. So that's what's going on here. You see that? So let's read on, and I'm going to show you. And Israel, even today, gets mad at that. Okay, they, Israel was mad at it back in the past, and they are mad at it. Today, when you mentioned that the Most High used somebody else to provoke Israel, okay, we have to do what we supposed to be doing, okay, we have to be the Israelites that the Most High chose us, we are his chosen people, and we have to represent and stand on that and be that and represent and be ambassadors for the Most High, you see that? So let's go, let's read on down the 26th verse, or uh, the 28th verse, but and all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose up and thrust him out of the city, and led him unto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong, because they was angry at what he said. He said, many widows was in Israel, but Elijah didn't go to any of them. He went to a Gentile. Many lepers were in Israel at that time. But look, Elisha or Elisha, didn't go to any of them, save Naaman, who was a Gentile. So Israel has to wake up. See, that's what he's pushing. Now, let's go from here. Now, from here, let's go turn over page. Luke, the fifth chapter. And let's read the 17th verse. Luke, the fifth chapter and the 17th verse. It reads, And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Let's read the 21st verse. It reads, And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but the Most High alone? You see that? So now, Yahushua has forced their hand to investigate his claims. They got to make a decision now. Is this the Messiah? Or are we going to live this lie? And we're going to deceive the people. See, so now doing this investigation in this 17th verse, what did we read? That Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by that came out of Galilee and Judea and Judea and Jerusalem, they came from all over to investigate Christ. See, to investigate him, just like they do the Israelites today. Okay, you have agents all around you. You have agents coming into your congregations. Okay, you have agents offering their talents in your congregation, okay? You got agents that's giving great donations in your congregations. You got agents that's working their way up into the centerpiece, up into the, the hierarchy in your congregation. And then you would all of a sudden have splits, divisions, cliques, and all types of confusions now. And you got sisters that are agents as well, okay? Keep that in mind. And also when you're out in the streets teaching, you have what is called provocateurs. You got people that provoke confusion out in the streets, out in the camps, and they claim to be, yeah, Kwame Yashala, yeah, the Most High, yeah, I like what you brothers are teaching, but yet they cause confusion and they cause havoc, and the police come and shut down the whole teaching area. See, pay attention to that, provocateurs. 
Now let's read on. Because during this time, if anyone was suspected of being the Messiah, if it was believed and they perform a healing act, it was reported to the Sanhedrin. You see, for investigation. A person could not be declared a Messiah without the Sanhedrin's approval. Ain't that something? And the Sanhedrin was the ruling body that decided all the religious and national issues for the Israelites. First, they would send Pharisees and others to observe the individual and report their actions to the Sanhedrin. And we just read that. That's what they're doing to Yahweh Shai. Now, once they do that, if the case is real, the case would build up and it would, it would make progress to the interrogation stage and during which the alleged Messiah claims would be questioned and challenged. So now they have investigated Yahweh Shai. They done took him to a, a, a K office now, uh, the high priest. Now they interrogating him now. Let's read that. Let's go to Matthews, the 26th chapter and the 57th verse. Matthews, the 26th chapter. Let's read the 57th verse. It reads, and they that, and they that had laid hold on him, or uh, laid hold on Yahweh shall led him away to K office, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. But Peter followed him afar off unto the high priest's palace and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Now the chief priests and the elders and all the council sought false witness against Yahweh Shai to put him to death. 60 verse, but found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses. Now let's read the 63rd verse to the 68th verse. It reads, But Yahweh shall held his peace, and the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Yahweh shall said unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, and coming in the clouds of heaven. The high then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He have spoken blasphemy. What further need, what further need have we of witness? Behold, now ye have heard his blasphemy. 66 verse. What think ye? They answered and said, He is guilty of death. See that? 67 verse. And then they spit in his face and buffeted him. And others smote him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us. Thou Christ, who is he that smote thee? So this is the interrogation stage now. They have arrested him. They have challenged him, questioned him, just like they challenge you in the streets. People come, or uh, uh, people come and observe. They take notes and they go back and they try to put scriptures together to combat or uh, uh, the scriptures that you're teaching. Okay, and try to confound you. Okay, that's what they do. So they uh, spit on you. How I spit in his face? They beat him, they arrested him, they locked him up. Okay, that's the interrogation stage. Now, the Pharisees and the leadership that rejected Christ's claims and his miracles, they said and they stuck with their official statement that he cast and do these miracles, cast out devils by the power of Satan. That was the official saying. Now, when they said that, Christ pronounced a judgment against them. That judgment was blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Really, it was blasphemy against the Most High. They went against God. They went against the Creator. You see that? That was a national sin, a nation of Israel national sin. And I'm not saying that as individuals, individuals cannot come to the Most High through Yahweh Shai's sacrifice and, and his uh, uh, by him being the mediator. Okay, individuals can do that, but the leadership and the people today in that Pharisaic mentality, they are in trouble, double trouble. Okay, they are in serious trouble, and we're going to read some of that. Let's go to the book of Matthew, the eighth chapter, and we're going to read verse 11 to verse 12. Let's read it. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east. And west, and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let's go on to Matthew's 21st chapter, and we're going to read the 43rd verse. Let's read that. Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of the Most High shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Now let's go to the book of Luke. The book of Luke the 13th chapter, 
and the 28th to the 30th first. The book of Luke, the 13th chapter, the 28th verse to the 30th. Let's read it. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of the Most High, and you yourselves thrust out. And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of the Most High, 30 verse. And behold, there are last which shall be first and there are first which shall be last. You see that? This is a judgment. Okay, now, when the scripture speaks about uh, you yourselves cast out and a people will be bringing, the kingdom will be given to a people bringing forth the fruits. The bringing forth the fruits is the fruit of the spirit of righteousness. And you can find it in the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter in the 22nd verse. And the spirit of the fruit, the fruit of the spirit of righteousness is long suffering, self-control, discipline, and discretion. You see that? So the ones that are Israelites, that are Christ-like, they would be that people. They would be that nation of people that would be bringing in the fruit of the Spirit. Not the mentality of the Pharisaic rejection of Yahweh Shai because they can't bring that. Okay, because you have to deal with the whole book. We have to be ministers of the gospel. Okay, it's the Israelites that believe in Yahweh Shai. The Israelites that are Christ-like are the ones that would be bringing in uh, the fruit of the Spirit of Righteousness. And also what we just read, when the scripture speaks about cast into out of darkness, that means that you are totally separated, separation from the Most High. You're totally separated from the Most High, which means that's the second death. See how serious this thing is? Now, let's go back over to the book of Matthews, the 12th chapter, and... Let's read the 31st verse and the 32nd verse. Matthew's the 12th chapter, verse 31 and 32. Let's read that. Wherefore I say unto you, all men of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven unto men. 32nd verse. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him, but whosoever speaketh against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. See that? So when you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, against really the Most High, when you attribute the Most High's operation to evil, or when you condemn the Most High's works as evil, you're out of here. That's it. Okay, there is no use for you, and the Most High will bring judgment upon any that's in that mindset, okay? The blasphemy against the Holy Spirit was a national sin. You see that? And the outer darkness is the separation from the Most High, and it's that second death. Now, with that, my brothers and sisters, I will yield with this class. I will yield now, and I say all praises to Yahweh, why Yahweh shy. Brothers and sisters, stay strong and stay focused and keep your antennas up. Always meditate. Always pray, even when you walk walk in the streets, uh, recite the scriptures in your mind. You're on the subway, wherever you at. Okay, it's dangerous out there. Uh, uh, gird yourself with the ammunition that you need, the spiritual ammo that you need, and recite those scriptures in your mind and be alert. Keep your spiritual eyes open as well as your physical eyes. Let brotherly love continue, and I say, Kwame Yashallah, Shalom.